welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odidi Ochi. <laughs> And now, the news in detail. The Federal Executive Council has approved 2.9 billion naira for the provision of water and fire service equipment in the National Oil and Gas Park to be sited in Odukwani, Cross River State. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timi Press Silva, announced this while briefing newsmen after the meeting of the Federal Executive Council. State House correspondent Adamo Sambo reports that similar approvals were also secured for the provision of other critical infrastructure in the transportation, works and housing, finance, education, as well as aviation sectors. And now to coronavirus. Latest figures from Nigeria's Center for Disease Control, NCDC, as at 1139 p.m. on May 19th indicates 226 new cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in the country, increasingly, increasing the number of confirmed cases to 6,401. Of the 226 new confirmed cases, 131 are in Lagos, 25 in Ogun, 15 in Plateau, 11 in Edo, seven in Kaduna, six in Oyo, and five each in Adamawa and the FCT. There are four new cases each in Jigawa, Ebony, and Borno states, while Nasrawa state has three new cases. Bauchi and Gombe have two new cases each, with Enugu and Bayelsa recording one case each. 1,734 patients have been discharged so far, with 192 deaths recorded. The House of Representatives is partnering with the executive arm of government to confront the coronavirus pandemic on all fronts. The Speaker, Femi Bajabia Mila, has inaugurated an 18-member ad hoc committee on COVID-19. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The challenge of overcoming the pandemic makes it a duty for the National Assembly to engage with the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. House Speaker Femik Bajabiamila says the role of the committee is to add value by serving as a link between the tax force and legislature on the one hand and the Nigerian people on the other. Citizens, doctors, nurses and all the health workers on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19 in Nigeria receive the full protection that, that they deserve and the benefits they have so honorably earned. Chairman of the House Ad Hoc Committee on COVID-19, Representative Haruna Mishilia, says the involvement of all agencies is necessary to sustain all gains spanning post-COVID-19. We will interact and make sure we do those things that will add value to what is happening. Terms of reference of the committee include monitoring activities of the PTF and all agencies related to management of the pandemic in the country from the National Assembly Lami Ali, NCA News. The First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, has underscored the role of traditional rulers for their support to the government towards containing the spread of coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. The First Lady was represented at the distribution of palliatives by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Administration and Women Affairs, Dr. Haju Sani. Set House Correspondent Aliu Kabir has more. The First Lady sent in this message during the presentation of food items to the representatives of the traditional rulers cutting across all the area councils within the Federal Capital Territory. While presenting the items comprising bags of rice, sugar, vegetable oil and other essential commodities, the First Lady enjoined them to ensure equity in the distribution of the items to the people at the grassroots. She added that the whole essence of the gesture is to mitigate the effect of the lockdown. Today is another, another usual kind gesture uh, by Her Excellency Dr. Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari being extended to the traditional rulers to also equally support them during this critical period of not only uh, the corona, the COVID-19, but of also the Ramadan period. 
Responding on behalf of the traditional rulers of the FCT, the owner of Abaji and the chairman traditional council of chiefs of the federal capital territory, Adamubu Bayinusa, represented by the Talba of Bauchi, Dr. Hassan Sule expressed appreciation for the gesture, adding that it will go a long way in supporting the people at this critical time. This wonderful gesture coming from the first lady, Dr. Aisha Buhari, is coming at the right time. This wonderful gesture will actually go a long way. The first lady emphasized the need for Nigerians to continue maintaining social distancing and obey all the guidelines by the authorities in fighting COVID-19. In Abuja, Ali Kabir, NTA News. Zakatul Fitri is a form of charity given to the poor at the end of Ramadan fast. This is enjoined on all Muslims to enable the less privileged to partake in the celebration. How important is this act, especially in this critical time, that people are coping with the impact of the lockdown resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic? Joining me now in the studio to speak more on this is Ustaz Meisuna Yahya. He is the founder of Al Mustafia Society of Nigeria. Ustaz, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Welcome to Nationwide. Thank you. Now, uh, why and what can one give as uh, Zakatul Fitri? The question why, actually, it's a cardinal to the importance of uh, Zakat al Fitri. Number one, it means somebody complies or obeys the instruction of Almighty Allah. Two, it means one follows the Sunnah, that is the footpath, the traditions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three, it serves as what you call palliative now because of Corona. There are so many. If you look at it critically, our fingers are not equal. Therefore, our functionalities are not equal. This one is taller than this. This is taller than this, and this is taller than this. So for those that are taller, they must help those behind so that they will remain happy at the same time. Then finally, it helps a lot to create and uh, unite the Muslims around as neighbors. Then it shows that somebody is showing sympathy and at the same time empathizing with the present condition of the particular or particular recipients. Okay. So that is the why. Okay. Then what can you give? Majorly you give grains or cereals like maize, guinea corn, and the likes. But you cannot give something like yam. It is not in, uh, in, in our book. Okay. It, is not, it is not recorded. So okay. but then like cereals or grains, like rice, like millet, guinea corn, those are the recommended uh, things that one has to give out as zakatul okay. fitri. Okay. Now, tell us, who can give and when? Good. All categories of matured fasting Muslims must give. Then the must will now be reduced to modal verb. They shall give. Who are those shall? Those who have, but they don't have enough. But they can, they can as well afford to give out that zakatul fitri. Must. Those who have and they have more than enough, it is compulsory to give out the zakat al fitri. But if one does not have, or cannot even feed himself, mm -hmm. but he was able to <coughs> fast, Allah is simple. He sees and knows, and that is for given. But ironically, for one who has and refuses to give, it is also uh, a minus. Okay. Yeah. Now, on, uh, who, uh, who is the giving? That's the giving out, mandatory. Uh, it is mandatory, one, on matured Muslim, well, Muslims, whether male or female. Two, it is mandatory, it is compulsory for one who has fasted that particular year's Ramadan. Three, one who has the will to do it, somebody who has the means mm -hmm. to do it. Because you don't necessarily go and steal because we want to give the cattle victory. Mm -hmm. So for those who have, for those who are matured, um, for the fasting Muslims of, of that particular year. Okay. Now, given the situation of the coronavirus pandemic across the world now, would, how do you think this, gest this gesture will impact the world? Well, uh, it can come in two different ways. Number one, if the lockdown is still on, particularly in some other states right now, then what they need to do is to, the day they open, the, the state is open, for going out to the market, they buy, and particularly between today and tomorrow or next, mm -hmm. they should buy, then give to the neighbors who are less privileged, who do not have things to take on that particular uh, eight day, that's the salad day. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Two, 
for those who have and they want to give or they have to give or they must give and they could not go out that is where the problem lies now because the prophet sallallahu recommended strictly greens and cereals but now that there is lockdown so that is another different problem and in that case well one can send someone if that person goes out in a case where no one goes out again in fact it's a serious problem and that's why some people suggest uh, they have been suggesting mm -hmm. that they can monetize so if you have somebody's account quantify the real quality of what that simply means then you give out okay but Thank one must try hard to make sure that they give exactly this real as recommended by the Professor Law Salah. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on Nationwide. Most welcome. Thank you for coming. We've been talking with Ustaz Maisuna Yahya, the founder of Al Mustafia Society of Nigeria. We're now going to Lagos to join Jennifer, who is standing by with more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Jennifer. Kilidia. Now, wearing of face masks in public is less becoming an issue in Lagos as it has become a norm. But the major problem is imbibing basic hygiene procedures like hand washing. Michael Olaleye reports on the disposition of Lagosians to safety measures and efforts at intensifying sensitization even as another round of partial lockdown enters day two. The traffic is back, and a sharp contradiction that the lockdown is gradually being eased. This is the my 12 axis of Lagos Metropolis, home to perishable food items. And here, business is ongoing as usual, with people engaging in various transactions freely. Lagos State Government specifically said that today, for example, today is meant to be for non food items, non-essentials, but as you can see, the essentials are still roaming the streets, uh, but the essentials and the non-essentials, so it's like the rule has not really been adhered to. Within this congested environment, I ran into Unisa, a carpenter by profession. To him, life is secret and must be protected above making money. He believes Nigerians are more enlightened about coronavirus, but their non-challenged attitude is his major problem. I happen to be in a BLT park in Baga. There's water point for people to, to wash their hands. If I'm not mistaken, we have more than 500 people in that, that place. Maybe maximum of one quarter of us, or less than 100, go to that water point to wash our hands. People don't care. Even if we hear from them from their statement, they are careless. Dealing in spare parts is not a license to understand more about the virus. Vincent is a typical example of someone who believes certain lifestyles have curative potential against COVID-19. But my stand is how correct is his belief. People are saying that uh, smoking cigarette or anything smokable can cure coronavirus. And uh, I don't know the truth. That's why when I see you, I say, let me come and ask. Meanwhile, the National Orientation Agency, NOA, is improving its sensitization tactics by moving from markets to other public places to enlighten Lagosians like Vincent and disseminate the message of healthy living in the midst of coronavirus. They are aware, but they, 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 they feel because of plethora of fake news, fake information that have been out there on social media space, you know, they, 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 don't, they didn't want to take to our government and say, but right now, the, the message is beginning to resonate uh, with the people. With Nigeria getting close to 7,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, Lagosians are of the view that increased awareness and sensitization will bring the country close to flattening the curve. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Thank you, Michael. Now, from the fight against COVID-19 to another kind. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIC, is on the trial of suspected human traffickers in connection with trafficking of about 24 underage girls to Lagos. Annie Daniels has details. This may not be new to several Nigerians. However, the mode of enticing these underage girls and recruiting them into prostitution and baby factory is disheartening. I came to Lagos by a lady. She told me that I'm coming to sell something for her. But 
on difficult. She now ran and left me. I do not actually want to work for you now. So you sleep with men, every, different men every day? Yes. Some of they pay you? Sometimes can pay for one time. Sometimes can pay one five. Sometimes can pay five hundred. Following the case of a missing person, they were looking for the girl. Somehow somebody who knows the girl saw her in Lagos. Alerted that people. And then investigation commenced. And the Nigeria police, working on that information, went for, to the location only for them to stumble on 23 more people. The 24 underage girls all said they were deceived into prostitution, but do not wish to return to their states or reunite with their families. I've been hearing about Lagos, Lagos. So I just came, I just came to see how Lagos is. How many you seen Lagos? I've seen Lagos. So tell us about Lagos. Sha, Lagos is a business place. It's just to make business, do your money, and think well for yourself. Not me. They have my mommy. If I find if I get pick any money, sometimes they send over my mommy. My David, or just my sister, my baby. baby. Lagos Zone Commander, National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Daniel Atokolo says the agency will leave nothing to chance to ensure that the culprit is arrested and brought to book. They're keeping a girl of 14 years in a brothel. What are you talking about? So we're going to prosecute them. We are going to ensure we heard, we are going to glean the truth of the matter. Because whatever victims tell you, you have to be very smart. They are smarter than you think. Natif warns Nigerians against engaging in human trafficking, promising that the law will surely catch up with those found guilty of doing so. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. We we'll still have more on Nationwide, but after the break, stay with us. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. It's the dawn of a new era in Makwumi Ogun, waterside local government area of Ogun State, where His Royal Highness of Bakazima Deshino Salami, the all-rounder, continues his remarkable achievements as the Oshobia of Makwumi one year after his official installation in the capacity of the monarch on May 21, 2019. Kabi, see your reign in the last one year has ignited tremendous development, even now that you anticipate your coronation. Congratulations on Momaku Oshobia, Iluareye Auruku. This message is powered by Rotarian Ambassador Martins Efe, President and Founder, First Child and Prisoner Care Foundation. In times like this, the coronavirus is spreading so fast. The use of face masks has become very vital. Vital, vital. More importantly, for the elderly in the society whom their immune system is not strong enough to fight the disease. If you must go out, use a face mask. It is not comfortable, but it is necessary. Wear your mask, I wear my mask. So much to do, but stay at home for your own safety. Make an extra washable mask and share with your neighbor. Every Everyone should use a face mask once you leave home to be safe from the coronavirus, especially the elderly persons in our society. Protect me, I'll protect you. This message was brought to you by the Coalition of Societies for the Right of Older Persons in Nigeria, cost wrapping, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency, NOA. As a strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19, 
A corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number. 0800-2255-4272 This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus. But we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Thanks for staying. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has withdrawn an order restricting the movement of essential workers during the curfew. First Public Relations Officer, DCP Frank Umba, in a statement said, the IGP gave directive to all the Assistant Inspectors General of Police, Commissioners of Police and Commands to give effect to these exemptions whilst enforcing the restriction orders. Let's now join Mie Ogidi to give us a situation report on level of compliance by public transporters on their compliance with social distancing order. Mie, what's the situation out there? Tell us. Thank you, Lydia. This is uh, Area 1 runabout in Garki, the Federal Capital Territory. And today is the day two of the phase, second phase of the partial easing of the lockdown in the federal capital territory and uh, here in this uh, phase all the guidelines of the first phase as it were are carried over to this phase so the issue of uh, wearing of face mask and distancing is still in force if you look uh, just here you see a very long traffic and part of the road is barricaded this is a uh, uh, a, a poly, uh, 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 is a, as a result of a joint task force of the enforcement of the uh, wearing of face mask and social distancing, especially inside the vehicle. Because as a commercial vehicle, you are permitted to carry only two at the back and one at the front seat, and all of them will be well kitted. I mean, wearing of face mask. So the uh, VIO and the police officers, as well as the civil defense corps members, are here doing a very thorough check of, to ensure that. Uh, they comply with the directive and uh, we have been here for quite a while and uh, uh, they have really caught some of those some defaulters who flout the the guideline of wearing of the face mask uh, uh, and and this and that has really posed some level of uh, traffic in this axis of the area that is the area one in the federal capital territory now tell us what's been done about those who are disobeying this order Lida, it's a kind of war here, as it were. Those that are not wearing face masks, uh, you know, it's a popular saying that the sinner run it when no one pursues him, but the innocent is as bold as that of the lion. So those that are not wearing face masks, they, they are trying to beat the, the, the intelligence of the police officers by speeding, and you, you, you'll be scared if you are the officer here. And uh, some of them, if they catch them in, during that process, they, they, they pack them, and give them a, a kind of a community service. For instance, like this guy has just been caught. He's not wearing face mask. He's not wearing face mask, and he's, he's, he's been caught. Uh, yes, I know. Obviously, he won't talk to me, but you know, he's against the, the the guideline by the presidential tax force on COVID-19. But I think uh, the officers are here to do the needful. So that that, that is the situation here at uh, Area One Runabout in the Federal Capital Territory, Lydia. 
Thank you very much, Mia, for that situation report in, at Gadiki. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's now join Adiola in, in Ibadan. She has more reports for us on Nationwide. It's over to you. Thank you very much, Lydia. Good afternoon and welcome to Ibadan. The ravaging coronavirus pandemic in the country is likely to put a sting on the food supply chain at post-COVID-19 season. In view of this, farmers have appealed to government for the provision of necessary agricultural inputs as they commence the planting season. Kayo de Oladoshu has details. Over the years, agricultural production has been in the fore of the provision of food. Owing to the present situation, which is occasioned by the coronavirus pandemic, farmers are requesting for the intervention of the government to avert farming after COVID-19. If care is not taken, very, very serious attention paid to how we can manage farmers to get to the farm, support them to be able to, take, to, to produce, definitely farming is knocking on our door. Now, you can't go out. Even what we are using, on the farm. Fertilizer that we used to buy for 7,000, 6,000, most of them are 10,000, 12,000 now. It was a contrary opinion for livestock farmers. The poultry farmer, we are still on the job. I believe that after COVID-19, we are going to have surplus. In view of this, what is the way forward in ensuring food security amidst and beyond the ongoing pandemic? Right to food bill. They should look out to that bill to make sure we use that bill to ensure that everybody in Nigeria plants something and we must provide security for everybody who is into, in the farming now. COVID-19 has led to the loss of human life across the world and it is already affecting the entire food system with the lockdown measures among others. It is therefore important that coordinated effort be geared towards limiting impacts and promote production and availability of safe and nutritious food for all in Ibadan. NTA News. Despite the ban on interstate travel against further transmission of coronavirus, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has intercepted some Sokoto bound commuters in Oshogo, Oshun State. Correspondent Demi Tokwe Odebumi reports that they have been turned back from moving out of the state. The 37 passengers are heading to the northwest region of the country, having left their base in Inlesha, but apparently missed their way and ended up in Oshogo, the state capital, on Monday night. They were arrested around 10 p.m. for disobeying government order on restrictions of movement. And I promised to my mother every day, say I will come, but she would not see me. So she now come angry with me by yesterday. She called me. She said, Salah is coming. If she bomb me, I shall try to become house immediately. No matter, no matter. We have won them several And we have even had, uh, we have even held a community a meeting on this attitude. But it seems as if they are stopped. And I have taken time off to speak with the, the house ahead. He was so sad that those people who refused didn't cooperate with him because of the cordial relationship. The constitution allows you to stay any part of the country. We are returning them back to their base. The commandant of the NSEC warned travelers to desist from the interstate travel in their own interest or face the wrath of the law. Oshobo, Temito Kweldebumi, NTA News. Thank you, Adebola. Let's move on now. As the federal government unveils plans to gradually reopen the economy, guests on NTA's program, Good Morning Nigeria, advocate the need for adequate dialogue and collaboration between the government, the organized private sector, and critical stakeholders on the best way forward after COVID-19. This was one of the many suggestions of guests while discussing COVID-19, gradual reopening of the economy. Alika Okpanachi Arua has that one. As the government moves towards reopening the economy, the safety of the workforce as they return back to work has to be considered, in addition to having a roadmap and a template on how to gradually reopen the economy with COVID-19 safety measures in place. For us in the hospitality and travel industry, we are the worst hit 
was hit in the sense that as we speak right now, all our businesses are also are all at a standstill. The airline business is a cash business. When airlines are not flying, they're not earning. When they don't earn, they cannot sustain. They also emphasized the need to balance the depth of loss in output and the fall in aggregate demand already experienced. This, they insist, can only be achieved through social and community discussions between the government and stakeholders to avoid clash of interests. We need policy dialogue, not policy monologue. You must know what the framework is all about. Everybody must be on the table. The policy must allow resources to stay at the household level by pushing back what they have to pay for, like rent and all that lower interest rate, and then making sure money comes into the household so that they can, they can stay afloat. That's the kind of balance that we need to have in going forward. The guests further stressed that this is the time for policy and strategic planning, as well as the need for all hands to be on deck in supporting federal and state government efforts to get the economy back on track while keeping Nigerians safe in Abuja. Alika Okbanachi, Arua, NT News. Let's now move to Port Harcourt, where Jenny is standing by with more reports on Nationwide. Jenny, you're on. Thank you, Lydia. The Federal Ministry of Health says it is impressed with the contact tracing surveillance and stringent measures adopted by the Cross River State Government to combat the COVID-19 crisis. A seven-man team from the ministry led by Omobalanle Oluwu was speaking during an assessment of the COVID-19 emergency response activity of the Cross River State Government. Justina Etam reports. The fact that Cross River State is yet to record a case of COVID-19 in the face of increasing spread of the disease in other parts of the country is a development that arouses the curiosity of the federal government. It is on this note the reported the seven-man team is in Calabar to see what Cross River State is doing differently. Isolation center is a isolation center one and two. It's adequate enough, it has oxygen, um, um, ventilators, it also have oximeters, pulsimeters, concent oxygen concentrators. To remain COVID-19 free and keep the local economy afloat, the Cross River State Government requires the assistance of the federal government to boost the production of personal protective equipment. For us in the state, we'll continue to do our best to see that we can protect our point of entry. Our dialysis is working, so we're prepared. Okay. The success story of Cross River States in the fight against COVID-19 is incomplete without the mention of early proactive steps and involvement of traditional institutions in the sensitization of the people. I think the country should start thinking seriously and think seriously with the health facilities. With this assessment, the team assures that soon officials of the NCDC will be dispatched to Cross River State to conduct testing in order to ascertain if Cross River State is actually COVID-19 free. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy ship NNS Pathfinder Port Harcourt has handed over a vessel MV Rock 1 and 3 barges laden with illegally refined diesel to EFCC for alleged involvement in economic sabotage. Kingsley Amajiri reports. The EFCC is to conclude investigation to ascertain those behind the alleged transshipment of the legally refined petroleum product contained in the vessel and the three other seized badges. On the 22nd of April 2020, Nigerian Navy Ship Pathfinder Patrol Team also arrested MV Rock 1, badge Juliana, and another unnamed badge at Ajip Waterfront. It is not an investigation that will last forever. It will be very speedy. We ensure that this investigation is concluded and conducted on time. In the meantime, the Nigerian Navy has warned criminal elements to desist from such unwholesome acts, noting that its continuous surveillance has made the maritime unconducive for illegal oil bunkering activities to thrive in the region. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. We'll have more on Nationwide after the break. Stay with us. COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. 
The battle of testing, isolating, treating, and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing. To the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner, we say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Nigerians, let us take responsibility. Stay healthy, stay safe, and curb the spread of the virus. Take responsibility. The coronavirus spreads from one person to another. Let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason. Take responsibility. Avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions. Obey all the rules that are put in place. Take responsibility. Stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus. There is no known cure for COVID-19. Take responsibility. Observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus. Together, we can do this, but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. I'm Tyro and I'm Kenya. We live here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, we have lived here for 15 years. Yeah, and, we're, um, we're, we're here to dedicate this video to my cousin. My dear, dear cousin who lost his life. Due to coronavirus, his name was Papa Femi, Adebayo Lord Femi. He was a good guy. And he was in the, left behind yeah, his wife and two and little kids. Two children. He, he was in the ventilator for 12 days and he died. Anyways, we are here. To alert everybody, both in Nigeria and the diaspora, to please stay safe. It's not enough to say stay safe. Maintain, maintain the social distancing because it's easy to just get into the routine and say that that other person also had coronavirus. If I get it, I'm young and strong and I'll be fine. But it's not about us being just young and strong. You know, here in Brazil, we, we blame the president, blame everybody, but the responsibility still lies on us. Please, if you please. can, if you have to go outside, maintain your social, maintain the social distancing. Wash your hands all the time. Use, use, your, use your face mask. Use gloves if you can. And once you come inside, you get returned home. Just try as much as possible to disinfect yourself at all times because it's real. It's, it's real. real. People don't have to die before we value yeah, life. Yeah, and so we don't please. have to also lose our loved ones. Yes. If we can tell everybody, if we can inform anybody, inform everybody you know to please stay safe. Stay safe. Stay at we home. don't have to die. My, my cousin is gone now. I, I, I wish I could bring him back. I, I, I'm inconsolable. My heart is broken. But please, if you can, stay safe. Stay safe. Please. please remain at home if you can. You're still on to Nationwide. Now, Asmao is standing by in Sakoto for more reports on COVID-19. Asmao. Thank you, Lydia. Good evening and welcome to Sakoto. While the President, in collaboration with National Directorate of Employment, NDE Sokoto Office, have commenced the production and distribution of 20,000 face masks to the people of the state. This is aimed at curbing the spread of coronavirus in the state. Sheikh Mohammed Deti has more. The use of face masks is part of measures health experts say can guard against the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Wife of the President and National Director of Employment have commenced the training and production of 20,000 face masks for distribution to the people of Sokoto State. Actually, this program came up as a result of scarcity of um, face masks in the country. The materials used in the production of the face masks is sanitized before the production. We hope this thing will come an end of coronavirus, inshallah. The trainees and trainers of the National Director of Employment will be given incentives to cushion the effect of COVID-19 lockdown in the state. This is to also solidify the federal government's policy on the need to patronize made in Nigerian goods, which are used for the production of the face masks. In Sakwatu, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News.
Over 2,000 internally displaced persons in Sokoto State have benefited with food items distributed by the state government. This is to reduce their suffering and assist them during fasting and Eid al-Fitri celebration. Muhammad Nasser reports. The flagged up of the distribution of food items to the internally displaced persons come along with a campaign to enlighten them on the dangers of coronavirus. The state government through the state emergency management agency is providing cellular package to the internally displaced persons to support them celebrate Eid al-Fitr with ease. Governor Amin Waziri Tambol, who represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Saeed Umar, said government is putting smiles on the faces of the internally displaced persons in the state. The government has been giving support to them to cushion the effect of their being uh, kept in IDP camps. Every year has a full vote. Ramadan and Salah Farkech through State Emergency Management Agency for IDFs. Food items that include bags of rice, millet, maize, guinea corn, and beans of 25 kilograms each and one closing material were given to each of the over 20,000 internally displaced persons in Gandhi Town, Operaba, and Guaranyo local government areas. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto. The news will continue with Lydia in Abuja. This will continue with Lydia. Thank you, Asma'o. Zamfara State Government has received the first batch of Al Majere, now bring 45, deported from Kaduna State. The deportees, comprising both males and females, have since been reunited with their families. Sadia Abubakar has more. The deported Al Majere, who are 45 in number, comprise 17 males and 28 females. <laughs> Investigation by NTA News revealed that most of the returnees who hail from Feleli and Bernie Tudu of Gumi local government area have been attending Al Majri School in Zaria of Kaduna State. The Commissioner for Women, Children and Social Development, Hajia Zainab Lawal Gumi, received the deportees, noting that it is a form of child abuse. She, however, warned parents to desist from sending their wards to Al Majri schools, but be more alive to their responsibility of giving their children sound education. The Commission of Information, Alhaji Suleiman Tuno Anka, said the state government is committed to ensuring free education for all, adding that the returned al have been tested and confirmed negative of coronavirus. The returnees have been reunited with their families by the Committee for Protection, Repatriation and Resettlement of al through the Emir of Gumi, retired Justice Lawal Hassan. In Guso, Sadia Abubakar Tuno, NTA News. Our next report is from Uyo. Across the world, there have been a consistent rise of disease outbreaks in the past decades. Ebola, Zika, cholera, yellow fever, Lassa fever, severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, influenza, Middle East respiratory syndrome, to, to mention just a few. Again, another outbreak is here, COVID-19. With all this, the world should have learned a lesson in the case of coronavirus pandemic. What are the lessons impacted on the health sector in Nigeria? Clement Barikui takes it from here. But trust me, after COVID-19, medical facilities in Nigeria will never be the same again. A lot, any state that will not pay attention to medical and health care, I mean, it means that person did not, uh, it wasn't around during this COVID-19, but I'm sure the entire world will change after COVID-19. He may not be speaking for all governors, but the realities on ground point to the direction of an improved health care system in Nigeria, particularly at the state level. This could be one of the lessons of COVID-19. Most health facilities that were hitherto abandoned or neglected have been renovated and are being put to optimum use, while some states are embarking on outright construction of new health facilities. Yes, both the government and the citizens have learned from the experiences of COVID-19 and these centers on preparedness for any health emergency. 
So when we have a preparation plan, things will be put in place, like in the healthcare sector, our leaders should be able to put things in place in that aspect. We need to pay more commitment towards ensuring that we do not engage in medical tourism when we come out of this. Indeed, COVID-19 is around with us and hopefully the world will be freed from it someday. But the lessons and its impact on the healthcare system in Nigeria will remain for a long time to come. In Uyo, Clement Barquin, NTA News. And now to the judiciary. The federal court in Abuja has ordered that all court processes relating to the suit challenging the consideration of the Control of Infectious Diseases Bill 2020 by the House of Representatives be served on the speaker, Femi Bajabi Amila, through his lawyer. The court gave the order following the inability of the applicant, Dino Milae, to effect service of process on all the respondents. Olabode Arewa will tell us more. The suit challenged the consideration of the bill was filed by the former Kogi West Senator in the National Assembly, Senator Dino Melae, on the grounds that some segments of it would infringe on his rights to life and liberty, alleging that some sections of the bill would make it mandatory for him and other Nigerians to take vaccinations. Clerks of the National Assembly and the House of Representatives, the Speaker, the Attorney General of the Federation, as well as the Inspector General of Police, are joined as respondents in the suit. At the resumption of the proceedings, Dino Mela's counsel, Inke Maloka Mokoro, informed the court that he has complied with the court's order by serving the court's processes on the respondents, except the Speaker. Kardia Juno counsel to the Speaker, however, informed the court that the matter cannot proceed without proper service on the respondents. The court thereafter reiterated its earlier order that status quo be maintained in the consideration of the control of infectious diseases bill by the House of Representatives. He's a lawyer himself, and I know he, he will definitely respect the fact that this matter is already before a court, and they will not take any further action in respect of the matter. One thing so clear is this. There's no court order restraining the House from doing it's their constitutional function. The matter has been adjourned to the 1st of June for definite hearing in Abuja Labodarewa. NT News. The attention of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. EFCC has been drawn to the antiques of some elements on social media employing desperate smear campaigns against the successful war against corruption by the commission and its acting chairman Ibrahim Magu. As a law enforcement agency, the EFCC has facts about the sponsors of such insidious campaigns. It is an unflattering fact that corruption will always fight back and the commission is not surprised that such a campaign is coming from some overseas based elements being investigated for acts of corruption by the commission. A statement by the head of media and publicity of the commission, Dele Oyewole, says it is uncharitable to link the acting chairman of the commission with the ownership of some buildings belonging to other individuals with verifiable addresses and also ridiculous to allege that the chairman shied away from being served a fictitious right of summons over a matter long decided by the judiciary. The commission therefore finds every unfounded claims against it and its helmsman as desperate backlash from disreputable elements suffering its uncompromising works against corruption and urge the public to ignore such fake news. Today is World B Day commemorated globally to draw attention to the role and importance of bees and other pollinators to the ecosystem. Today is dedicated to raising awareness and highlighting the need to conserve bees for sustainable economic development. Bees are known to be pollinators of wildflowers and crops, source of honey and beeswax popular in the production of candles, polishes and pharmaceutical products. The theme for World Bee Day 2020, Save the Bees, draws global attention to conservative use of natural resources. Some agrarian communities in Abia State have taken advantage of the early rains to embark 
on the 2020 farming season to ensure food sufficiency. They have been confronted with the challenge of army worms, which are destroying their crops. Steve Lunai Nguakolo in this report examines this situation and efforts being made to tackle the challenge in the state. Agriculture has been identified as the mainstay of Nigeria's economy, giving its 40% contribution to the country's gross domestic products, therefore resorting to it, particularly at this trying time of the COVID-19 outbreak across the world, cannot be overemphasized. It is in recognition of this that farmers in the agrarian communities of Abia states are embracing farming to avert the looming economic recession on account of the coronavirus pandemic. Much as the farmers are geared towards this farming objective, they have faced the challenge of army worms attacking their crops at the developing stages. I've gotten a chemical that I've, I've used for it for the first time, and I'm, there's improvement from the one I've done of it already. After two weeks, we repeated, and yet we are still having the challenge of this army worm. A visit to some of the farmlands revealed the devastating effects of the army worms on the crops, such as maize. What several government will do is to make sure that they release the those materials to various uh, states so that we, the farmers, we use it to fight the, the disease. Programs manager Abia State ADP, Israel Amazi, is soliciting federal government support in the provision of pesticides to tackle this menace. We have applied the chemicals that came with this package. It's not even catching up with it. And we have heard that a lot of uh, chemicals allocated to the south is, is packed in Enugu, yeah, at Federal, Federal Ministry of Agriculture in Enugu. It is not being released. It is the expectation of the farmers that government comes to their rescue to avert the imminent losses of their crops in the next harvest season. In Omaha, Steve Lanai, Waukulu, NTA News. Thanks, Steve. Now sports. The fallout of the extraordinary meeting of the National Council on Sports has re renewed hopes of athletes and administrators who cannot wait for a new pronouncement on the National Sports Festival. Sports correspondent Bade Adeleye tells us the reaction after an 11-member committee was mandated to propose a new date for Nigeria's biggest sports fiesta. The postponement of the 20th National Sports Festival in Edo State on the 17th of March 2020 generated mixed reactions. But soon enough, it became evident it was the right call. Now, two months after the postponement, talks have begun on staging the festival on a date to be soon decided this year. Any such return will be guided and will be a function of the trend of variables. Flattening the curve, a cue from the PTF, Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, and consultations with key stakeholders, in this case, even the athletes. The coronavirus pandemic has birthed a new normal in sports. This means the National Sports Festival will take a new dimension if held. This now brings the debate on the decision to still hold the event this year. I'm really very happy with the fact that they've taken a decision to hold in the National Sports Festival this year. Uh, considering the fact that the state government has spent so much in making the facilities available for athletes to really uh, compete at different levels at the National Sports Festival. And not only that, the, the fact that it's an opportunity for the athletes to really test their mind, looking towards 2021 when the Olympics will eventually be held. We don't want it to spread, but at the same time, we want our lives to go on. Most of the 11,000 athletes expected to compete at Edo 2020 have been out of camp for about two months, while some have not been training. In order to compete at the highest level, they have demands. Well, athletes will be thinking two things. One, our safety. Is it safe enough? The second thing athletes will have in their mind is they will need time to train again. Help us do some tests so that we all will be prevented from the COVID-19. The accommodation should be um, sufficient enough to observe social distance. Also, during the tournament, there should be um, hand sanitizer. Decision makers agree the coronavirus pandemic is a huge concern, but are ready to go ahead with the National Sports Festival if certain health and safety measures are put in place. In Abuja, Badi Adeleye, NT News.
President Muhammad Buhari commiserates with former Chief of, Ge Chief of Staff, General Staff, Lieutenant General Oladipo Dia, over the passing of his wife, Chief Deborah Folashade Dia, praying that the Almighty God will comfort the family. In a statement by Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, the President described Mrs. Folashade Dia as a devout Christian who dedicated her time to serving God and humanity without reservation. President Buhari affirms that the wife of the former Chief of General Staff lived to encourage and inspire many on faith in God as she demonstrated love, kindness, and generosity to the underprivileged. While Commensurate, commiserating with family members, friends, and associates of Chief Folasha de Dia, particularly members of the United African Methodist Evangelical Church, President Buhari prays that the soul of the departed finds rest in God. And now a quick check at the weather prospects for tomorrow.